Okay, so now we're going to take a look at the Java Fundamentals, Section 3.8, Material for Oracle Academy. Um, we will cover world animation and the game end. The objective is that where the objectives are that we will construct a world object using a constructor method. We will construct an object using a constructor. We will write programming statements to use the new keyword. We will define the purpose and syntax of a variable. We will recognize the syntax to define the and test variables. We will write programming statements to switch between two images. And we will write programming statements to end a game. Constructors. We've seen these before. Uh, when the wor New World subclass is created and compiled, Greenfoot executes a constructor that creates an instance of it to display in the scenario. Constructors set up the instance and establish an initial state, such as the size and resolution of the instance. Constructors have no return type. Their name immediately following the word public is the same as the class in which they are defined. We have seen this before. Constructors are special methods that are executed automatically whenever a new instance of a class is created. Constructor parameters. A constructor parameter a constructor's parameters allow an instance's initial values to be passed into the constructor. We will see that, take a quick look, um, we know about the my world constructor and here we have parameters and these go to the super classes constructor. Um, the three parameters are the x width, the y height, as well as the resolution for um, the world that's going to be created. The parameters are only available to the instance created by the constructor. Um, the parameters have a restrict, restricted scope limited to when the constructor is declared. Uh, we haven't seen scope too much, um, though that is what the public is when we see public static void. And it determines what is allowed to have access to a method. Parameters have restricted the parameters have restricted lifetime. It's limited to a single execution of the constructor. We cannot call that method again. The parameters disappear once a constructor is finished executing. Again, we only have access. The scope is only for when we execute the or initialize the world or create the instance in general. The parameters are var valid variables as long as the instance exists. So once we set that parameter, the instance hold on to them, holds on to them. Constructor example, and this is one we've seen before. The constructor in the world subclass uses the super keyword to pass the world's height, width, and resolution values to the new instance. Parameters example again. To change the size of the game board, we modify the arguments in the parameter of the constructor. This example makes the world square instead of rectangular by changing the x coordinate limit to 400. We create a 400 by 400 board. Automatically create actor instances. So we're going to go and write code in the world constructor to automatically add actor, insta actor instances to the game when the scenario is initialized. We've actually done that. We can see it here. Um, actually, we use prepare to do that. Prepare calls, prepare, and we add actors. It eliminates the need for the player to have to manually add instances before the game starts. For example, in a matching game, the card should automatically display in the scenario when the game starts. This is the code to automatically create instances. The code in the world constructor includes the following components. Super, 
to um, which has the size of the world as the arguments and then add argument add object with the following arguments the keyword new because we are creating a new instance of the class and then the x and y coordinates for where that object should appear where, where that instance should appear uh, we saw also there's another alternate way of doing that where we can create the object separately and then add the object only using the name of the object's class as well or the name of the object as well as the location Greenfoot actor instances more info alternating between two images that look slightly different gives an instance the appearance of movement Greenfoot actor instances they receive and hold an image from their class the image was assigned to the class when the world when the class was created Greenfoot actor instances have the ability to hold multiple images and Greenfoot actor instances can be programmed to change the image they display at any time we'll take a look at the Greenfoot image class the Greenfoot image class enables Greenfoot actors to maintain their visible image by holding an object of type Greenfoot image this class is used to help a class obtain and manipulate different types of images images that this class will use must pre-exist in the scenarios images folder so we must put the images we're going to use in the images folder or else we're going to get an error that the image can't be found so here's how that works constructor to obtain a new image object we create a constructor that retrieves a new image object from a file when creating an instance of a class. The example constructor below creates a new image and attaches it to the actor class. So we see set image using a set image method. New, because we're creating a new instance of set the image class. Um, Greenfoot image, that's that Greenfoot image class and then whatever the name of the image is the statement below creates the new image object from the named image file when inserted into the class's source code the image object is ready for the class to use the statement is executed as follows the greenfoot image object is created first the set image method call is executed passing the newly created image object as an argument to the parameter list so what that's saying is it's first going to execute what's in the middle create a new greenfoot image of B PNG and then that image will be a parameter for the set image method so what we're going to use is this set image method along with the new object new greenfoot image and bpng and we'll go ahead and we'll test that and we're going to create a constructor which we actually haven't learned yet um, I'm getting an error because I modified something during the break um, let's see if it runs now there we go so we'll go in here we're going to create a new constructor and we'll follow the instructions that they have for creating the new image. Um, we haven't learned constructors. We're going to see that in a little bit. Don't worry about typing this just yet, but I want you to see where this is going. Um, constructors, uh, I think we previously said, are going to be named after the class, so we'll call this public B, and we'll open and close. And then we're just going to add this code that we see here, set image. New Greenfoot. Oops. Greenfoot image. 
and then what I'm going to do, it's already a bee, we saw that. I'm going to call it a spider dot png and this way we could see it working since before it automatically created the B. Um, so compile. Um, I forgot a closing bra brace. Compile. We see that it compiled. Um, Here we go. So notice it compiled with the spider there. And if I take that code out, compile. So while we don't really need to make this look like a spider, it was good just to see how it works again. Um, we'll remove that comment, compile, and we see that it works in just a little bit we'll actually see how we might use this in a real world scenario. So let's go back to the slides. Why instances hold multiple images? You may want an image, an instance to hold and access multiple images to appear to change color, to appear to change from one type of object to another, for example magically change from a rabbit to a tortoise or magically change from a bee to a spider to appear to move to walk change from an object with a leg extended to one with the left leg extended then the right leg extended to flip cards change from a blank card to non-blank to fly change from outstretched wings to folded wings this is stuff that we saw in Alice uh, no different just maybe the way that we do it in Greenfoot accessing multiple images. For example, an instance could access two images, each with slightly different wing positions, so the instance flaps its wings as it moves. To achieve this motion, we create two images of the instance, each with slightly different wing positions. Store the two images in the instance so they can be accessed repeatedly as the object moves. Then we code the class to alternate between the two images that are displayed. A good way to do this is uh, by using variables. We can use class variables to store the two image objects. This allows the class to easily access them for use within the instances. A variable is declared in a class. It is used to store information for later use or to pass information. It can store objects or values. Basically an object is an instance. So object one might be assigned to this variable object 2 will be assigned to variable 2. Variable format. A variable's format includes data type, what type of data to store in the variable, and it includes a variable name, a description of what the variable is used for so it can be referred to later. We've previously seen this um, with int distance or int width. So here we're seeing um, private variable type variable name. The private is an act is the um, for the scope. So we've seen public now we see private. Um, private means things outside of the class cannot access it. Um, you need something inside the class to access. Don't worry about that. Just know that when we declare the variables, we'll declare the variables as private. Methods we're generally going to declare as public. We can do either the opposite way, but generally that's how we do it, and later you'll probably learn why. In this example, the variable name is image1, and the variable type is greenfoot. So we're going to say private as I said that's what we're going to use for our accessor. Greenfoot image is the data type and then image one.
here's how we declare the variables. So declaring variables before the constructors and the methods. We want to do this before everything is um, created so the program has access. The format for declaring a variable includes the keyword private to indicate that the variable is only available within the actor class. In this case, the actor class, um, if we were to declare something in the Greenfoot class, then it would apply there. Uh, the class to which the image belongs, and then the placeholder. We could go ahead and code that in. Um, let's go ahead and do that. Um, I'm in my B. We're going to do this above public B. I'm doing it below the comments. They're not showing the comments, but we could see um, we are within the B class. And we'll say private green foot image image one pretty sure that's it. And then private green foot image image two. No space. Compile and no errors. Assignment statements. An assignment statement is needed to store objects in a variable. And we spoke about that. We don't think of this as an equal sign. We think of it as assigned to. So the expression is assigned to the variable. Remember that for comparison we use double equals. When an object is assigned to a variable, the variable contains a reference to that object. So this variable will refer to whatever we stored in it. An assignment statement stores the object or value into a variable is written with an equal sign. But we don't want to think of it as equals. We want to think of it right to left assigned and we can only have one value here. An assignment statement includes variable name of variable to store the object or value, equals symbol, which is assign the assignment symbol, expression name of object or value to assign, an instruction that the object or value is new, and class to which the image belongs. So let's go ahead and code that in. Um, image one. We could actually add that in here. Well, let me hold off because I'm not sure how they're going to do it. Let me follow what they do. We'll jump ahead. They're going to do it in the constructor, so I'm going to hold off on doing this. So initializing images or values. Initializing is the process of establishing the instance and its initial values. Kind of like if I say int x equals 1, int x equals 0, that is initializing the variable. When the class creates new instances, each instance contains a reference to the images or values contained in the variables. Guidelines. The signature does not include a return type. Name of constructor is the same as the name of the class. They're actually talking about the um, constructor here. The constructor is automatically executed to pass the image or value onto the instance when an instance of the class is created. So this will give the instance all of those values um, that we're looking for. Here's an example of the actor constructor. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and code that. The following actor constructor tells Greenfoot to automatically create a newbie instance and in initialize or assign two variables to the instance these two variables. The last line of the constructor, set image image one, 
over here indicates that the first variable should display when the instance is added to the scenario. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and code that. I'm going to show you a little trick too. And here's the trick. Remember I said that the image for the B needs to be in the folder for us to use it. What we can do is set image. This is what's currently in the folder. I can go ahead and we'll add B2. Did it not work? Reset. There it is. And then I'll switch it back to B1. Or I could even leave it that way. It doesn't matter. Um, but what matters is now it's actually in the folder for the scenario. So I can use that. Um, the alternative is to find that B image and copy it into the folder with the rest of the stuff for the class. So let's go ahead and we'll bring up the code and we'll bring the text over here and we already have this part. I already have my constructor. Um, I'll leave this commented out. I recommend if you test stuff leave, leave it in the code and then comment it out as you're learning so later you could go back and see some of the stuff that you've done. Um, it's not necessary to do that but sometimes it's helpful you get to see your code. In the constructor we're going to put image1 equals new greenfoot image b.png I misspelled image the last time, which is giving me an error now. See, it knows that that didn't exist. Now it exists. Um, and then we'll put image2 equals new greenfoot image b2. PNG. And compile. Now remember, oh wait, I just forgot one thing. We wanted to set the image. I remembered when I said, and remember, it reminded me that we actually have the image set to be image 2, remember. But because the constructor um, is setting to image 1. When we look at the scenario now, we should see image 1. And we do. So let's go back to the slides. Test the values of a variable. Once the class is initialized, the two variables with the images um, program the instance automatically switch the image it displays as it moves. We're going to do that in a little bit. As the images alternate with each movement, it makes the instance appear more animated. It is possible to program the switch between images without having to write many lines of code that associates each image to every single movement. Um, so we'll write the actions in pseudocode. Um, pseudocode is basically plain English um, rather than programming code so that we can get an idea what the program is going to do. So you see, pseudocode expresses the tasks or operations for the instances to perform in a mix of Java language and plain English words. This helps to better understand what behaviors the instances should perform before writing the real code. So here's our pseudocode um, example. Image 1 is displayed when the instance is created. When B makes its next movement, image 2 should be displayed and vice versa. This is expressed as an if-else statement. Um, we can either do exactly what they have or we can be kind of close. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this in a separate method. They may do it slightly different later. Um, you could have it either how it's done in the slides or how I do it if it's different. We're going to do public void swap images And then here is where we could put pseudocode. Um, pseudocode we want to enter as a comment because it's not real Java. 
um, if current image is image one then use image two else use image one and I didn't match exactly what they did you can match what they did you can match what I did um, you could have something else but it should be clear what's going to happen here um, this uh, these are kind of our notes to program by and then they're also help later when we try to figure out what we actually were trying to do um, the double equals operator the programming statements that instruct the instance to alternate between images contains if else statement and we're going to use a double equal operator for comparison. Um, the double equal operator is used in an if statement to test whether two values are equal. It compares one value to, with another and returns a boolean true or false result. Remember that a single equal is an assignment statement, not the symbol to test whether two values are equal. Components of if else statements. Components of the if else statement will have a method get that get image receives the instance current image and then we're going to use the double equal operator to check that the value of the instance displayed is equal to image one and if it is it'll display image two if it's not then it will display image one and that'll allow it to go back and forth we'll, we'll see that it'll be a little clearer when we actually do it so here is the example the if else statement below is written in the act method um, or for us we're going to put it in the swap image method to make the instance alternate the display of two images as it moves forward um, so here's my swap images and we have the if current image is image one then use image two so we're going to say if get image and that's going to return what image it finds and we'll compare that to image one if get image is image one then we're going to use image one um, and I said I was going to be consistent with this we'll bring this back again either method is okay for for the braces uh, we'll set image image 2 we have to pass a parameter okay so what's going to happen is it's going to see if it's image 1 that's what we see on the screen and if it is it's going to change it to image 2 and then we'll see image 2 now if it's not image 1 that means it is image 2 and if it is image 2 then we want to set image one and I'm going to go put these in the braces um, I missed that I'll do that afterwards set image to image two or image one and then I also will need to call that which I've been forgetting to do and then I see it doesn't work and go back and set it um, but we'll swap images so there we go and now let's see how that works so let's run and it's swapping awfully fast um, but we could tell that it actually did work so let's go back to our slides we're in 29 um, we'll also move the animation code away to its own method to keep it cleaner so now they're calling it animate B um, what I'll do is instead of swap images I'll follow what they did animate B and then we have to call animate B. So 
there we go. End a game. The Greenfoot class is a stop method that you can use to end your game at a point that you designate. You may want to end the game when the player achieves a milestone, such as getting a certain score or um, milestone might be running out of lives. Um, time runs out on the clock, the instance touches a certain coordinate or object, pretty much anything we might want to end the game. Example B game. Example game. The player decides how many times a bee is caught by the spider object to end the game. When the game ends, a sound plays game over. The game specifications create and initialize variables to store lives and score. Provide a count of the total flies eaten, which will give us our score. Enter the stop method to stop the game when the player's lives reach zero. Find the stop method in the G Greenfoot API. So we, I think I have the API open. Um, Greenfoot and stop. So there's the stop method and all we have to do is put stop. Public static void stop stops the execution. We saw that. Um, we have to refer to it we're using Greenfoot because it's in the Greenfoot class. At the point the game should end, write the method as follows into the source code. Dot notation is used because it's not in that tree of actor subclasses. Assign variables to instance instances example. Um, so the bee must catch a number of fly objects to increase the score. The bee will also lose a life if caught by the spider. The variables are defined before the constructors and methods. Um, so we saw that we're going to declare up here. The bee constructor assigns the variables to the instances it produces. So let's do this and hopefully it'll clarify if you have any questions. Um, so we want int score and int lives in um, the B class. And score. Notice these are not initialized. And then we're going to go ahead and add them to the um, constructor right below set image. Um, that should have been lives. Score equals zero. So this is where we're initializing. Actually, not really initializing. We're assigning a value. Um, but it's going to get created when we construct the B. catch fly define method example. The catch fly define method is written below the act method to tell the bee to catch fly objects. I think we may have done this already. We will add one to the score. Oh, that's the part we're changing. We will add one to the score variable for every fly that is eaten. So let's go um, in the B, let's come over here. We'll find catch fly, and it's going to remove the touching. And then what it's going to do is score plus plus. This is shorthand notation. It is the same thing. You don't need to do this, but if we say score is assign the value of score plus one. I will comment that because it's going to otherwise increase my score by two. The other thing it could be is um, another shortcut would be score plus equals one. And just so you can see that that's correct, we'll compile. Notice I compile with no errors, um, but we'll comment that out. So you see two other ways that we can do the same thing. The score plus plus as an incrementer um, by one is 
find and that's probably the most common way to do this. Um, assign variables to instances example 2. Um, so what we want to do is if the B is caught by a spider, um, we'll reposition the B to the top left and we'll extend the B class by adding a new method um, caught by spider and then add a call to the, in the act method um, and then test if the user has no more lives to stop the game. So again we'll take a look at this code. Um, remember we're starting off with three lives and I'm just going to keep going below the act method and we're going to code this. Um, private void. Don't worry about why we used private. That is for a later class. private void caught by spider and then if is touching spider or is touching spider class something's gonna happen um, if it's touching the spider class, we'll set the location of the B to 2020. Then we're going to decrement the lives. Lives minus minus. We saw um, score plus plus. Now we have lives minus minus. Um, this is a separate if statement. If lives less than zero something's gonna happen um, wrong one if the lives are less than zero green foot stop you saw that earlier and so let's see what happens showing text. Sometimes we want to keep the user of an application informed on particular aspects of their interaction such as score, live scores, and cards left. So we'll see that in just a moment. Let's test this. Um, we'll run it. Right now there's only one fly to eat. So he ate the fly. Let's pause it. Um, we'll inspect them. And static fields. inspect him. Score is one. He still has three lives. So let's run that. i make sure he hits a spider. He is hitting the spider. I did not make a method call to the caught by spider method. So let's put that in act. caught by spider and got caught by the spider and we ended the game. So that was it. Um, so now let's look back at the code. Sometimes we want to keep the user of an application informed on a particular aspect of their interaction, such as live score or cards left. Greenfoot again has a number of ways to achieve this. The simplest is um, using the world method show text. And if we look at the documentation, we'll see that it's void. Um, show text. It's not really returning anything, it is printing something. Um, Java language string text um, and x and y. So we're going to put the text that we want and then the location. And here we have the update score. And let's go ahead and code that in. Now we'll go below the act. Private void. Update 
update score. And we'll increment the score. And then get world dot show text score this is the text that's going to appear they have a space I like my um, semicolon right after score so I'm going to do it that way then I'll have a space um, plus score comma 60 comma 390 so what's happening here um, and then what we'll see in a moment get world means it's, it needs to get the world object so it knows what our world we're in and the world we're in it's going to show some text that's a method that exists um, in Greenfoot world this will print this is the first parameter that they showed us let me jump back one that's the first parameter that they showed us um, the Java language string um, this actually all is part of that we're putting a string and then attaching to that string this is called um, a concatenation sign it looks like a plus sign but when we put it next to a string it becomes concatenation it puts these two together so it's going to say score and then print the current score and then we gave it the X and Y which are the current locations where that score should appear um, and then what we're going to do I don't remember where my score plus one is ah there it is if touch if remove touching fly class um, we'll put it in here update score I'm not sure where they're going to have us put it Yeah, we'll call it from here. Since we added there, um, if they have us do it a different way, um, we'll do that um, when they show it to us. But this should work. Um, update score. So let's go ahead and see how that works. And there we go. It added it. Now I can't increase that score because I don't have any more flies later on will make it so that if I eat a fly it adds a fly um, and that is where they put it update score went into um, is touching they removed the um, score in increment from here I just commented it out um, so terminology we learned constructors we learned to define variables and we learned pseudocode um, in summary, we learned to construct a world object using a constructor method. We learned to create an object using a constructor. We learned to write programming statements to use the new keyword. We learned to define the purpose and syntax of a variable. We learned to recognize the syntax to define and test variables. We learned to write programming statements to switch between two images. And we learned to write programming statements to end a game. That is all.